Well, good morning. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ. It is good to see you here today at worship. If you are visiting First St. Paul's this morning, I'm Pastor Andrea Paulson, Associate Pastor here at First St. Paul's, and we are so thankful that you chose to worship with us today. We have a few announcements as we begin our service this morning. First of all, um, next Sunday, immediately following this service, we will be decorating this uh, sanctuary for Christmas. Here at First St. Paul's, we call that the Hanging of the Greens, and so immediately after this worship service, we would love for you to stay and deck the halls of the sanctuary. And can I just get an amen? Does this room look gorgeous at Christmas time? It's so beautiful. And, and so we appreciate any help we can get with putting up the Christmas, Christmas trees, the lights, um, and just preparing our space uh, to celebrate the holidays, the Christmas season. And so that will be next week immediately following this service. In addition, it is really difficult to believe that we are heading into the holidays. Is anybody else just just kind of how is that possible um, the family we have a family advent Jesse tree activity will be on Wednesday December 4th a Jesse tree is a uh, devotional reading plan that keeps your heart and mind on the Word of God during Christmas um, this is for families which means if you are so alive you are a family. So this isn't just for kids. I think, Holly, you did an Advent wreath last year, didn't you? Or Jean did. Jean Stevens did. Um, but there's an, this is for anybody that would like to partake in this Advent celebration. Um, if you would like to participate, sign up in the Friendship Gathering area. Space is limited to 50 families. And this thing is going to be amazing. And so uh, please join us for that on December 4th, an Advent Jesse Tree. This Wednesday at Ichthus, we're celebrating Thanksgiving with our meal. It will be our Thanksgiving dinner. So turkey, mashed potatoes, gravy, cranberries, all the fixins, and apparently pumpkin pie is going to be the meal on Wednesday. So please join us for uh, dinner that night. Invite community members. Um, what we learned with Trunk or Treat is so many people in our community do not get a homemade meal. So if you have a neighbor or a friend uh, that maybe won't have a Thanksgiving celebration, invite them to the Thanksgiving dinner this Wednesday. And then next Wednesday, the 27th, we are going to have our Thanksgiving Eve service in this space at 7 o'clock. And so that is what is coming up. And uh, I believe that is all of our announcements. There will not, so at the rally dinner last weekend, we did a, um, an opportunity for you to tell us about your hopes and your dreams for the future. The hope was to do the second part of that today. We are not doing that today. We'll be doing that in a couple weeks. And so, um, be here for that. That'll be great. On that note, I invite you to please stand. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please take a moment to move around the worship space and welcome one another to worship today. Our service continues with the confession and forgiveness on the front page of our bulletin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of our, your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, 
and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you, and as a needed reminder for myself, the entire forgiveness of all of our sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is number 843, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise let us pray to the Lord Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth.
let us join our hearts in prayer. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without you nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Embrace us with your mercy, that with you as our ruler and our guide, we may live through what is temporary without losing what is eternal. That is Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The congregation may be seated as we turn to God's word. Today, the first reading is found on page 558 and 559 in your pew Bible. It is from the 12th chapter of Isaiah, beginning with the first verse. You will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were hungry with me, your anger turned away, and you comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the nations. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done glorious. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion. For great, is, great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. The psalm reading is Psalm 122, and it is found on page 498 in your pew Bible. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem, built as a city that is bound firmly together. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. As was decreed for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord. For there the thrones for judgment were set up, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they pro prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and security within your towers. For the sake of my relatives and friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. The second reading is found in 2 Thessalonians, and it's on page 962 in 2 Thessalonians 3, starting with the verse 6. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you, and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor we worked night and day, so that we might not burden any of you. This was not because we did not have the right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, you gave us this command. Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. gospel reading for today can be found on page 856 in the Bibles that you have before you. That is page 856. It's not the page it is in my Bible. So just a second while I get there. And that is, uh, this is the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 21st chapter. 
When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, he said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name and, I, and say, I am he and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, don't be terrified, for these things must take place first. But the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places, famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you the words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. This is the gospel of our Lord. We have a couple kids here today. Come on up for a kid's message, children. There's like one or two. I bribe with suckers. <laughs> you can bring her too. It's okay. <laughs> well, okay, so sometimes we, you know, we like to do children's messages for kids, but this one is also for adults today, so that's why we're doing it with our two, our two toddlers. <laughs> but this is okay. Moms get suckers too, right? Hi. Oh, he's smiling. All right. Isn't it so fun to have little kids? Oh. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. How are you? You can sit with mom. That's okay. Hi. How are you today? And mom, you guys get to participate as well. Okay. So, kiddos, do you guys ever sing songs? Do your, do your, do your mommies or daddies or grandmas or grandpas sing with you? We're going to sing a song, okay? And if you know it, can you sing with me? And all of you can sing too. Ready? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? Everybody knows that song. There's another one that my kids learned when they were little, and it was the Days of the Week song, and it went to the Adams Family. And here's how it went. Days of the Week, 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 he's snapping. There's Sunday and there's Monday, there's Tuesday and there's Wednesday, there's Thursday and there's Friday, and then there's Saturday, days of the week, days of the week. Good job. Do you want to know why we do songs to sing? Do you want a second? Do you want one? Do you want to know why we sing songs, kids and adults? It's because it helps us learn things, right? And that's why we sing, is singing helps us learn and remember. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> and that's why we sing in church, too, because singing helps us learn and remember the faithfulness and the goodness of God. That's why we sing in the same way that the ABCs and the Days of the Week in Do, Re, Mi and the Bible, ver the Bible book song. It's because it helps us remember. So everybody gets to remember that as we head into the message. Can we pray? Dear God, thank you for songs that help us remember and learn that you are good. Amen. Thanks for coming up. I said it's so fun, you guys. And now we all are singing the ABCs in the Adams Family song. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, here. Gary, do you want, do you want one too? <laughs> my husband always asks my kids, get me one too. <sighs> well, my friends, an excellent way 
to test people's values is to observe what they do when they don't have anything they have to do. Basically, what do we do with our leisure time? So who are you in relationship with? Think about your friends. Don't you find that as we get older, our friends become more closely aligned with the things that are important to us? How do you spend your leisure time? Lean over and tell the person next to you what you do when you have free time. What do you do when you have free time? <laughs> Cross stitch, okay? This, so we watch sports, even if they lose. We just keep watching. We play on our phones, some of the younger generation. How do we spend our extra money, right? Those things reveal a lot about us, the things that we do and choose to do when we don't have to do anything. And here's what's so interesting, even in a time of rapidly declining church attendance and membership, when only 25% of people attend worship services on any given weekend, when regular church attenders, this is statistics, when regular church attenders only attend worship 1.7 times a month, and when only 6% of churches are growing, either the largest of the large churches or the smallest of the small is what I learned this week. Tiny, tiny churches and super, super large churches, super-sized churches. Even still, 52 million Americans are worshiping this morning. More people are at worship on any given Sunday than at our all football games, all golf courses, and hunt and deers, and shopping. Let's put this another way for those of you who are um, online shoppers. In one year, 2,700,000,000 million people will attend worship in the United States alone, which is four and a half times more packages than Amazon will ship this year. Worship remains the single most popular activity that people choose to do. Are you following me here? This is impressive, my friends, because by and large, everyone who is here today and everyone who is in here in, in churches around our country today are there because they want to be. Okay, now there is some bribery of children and spouses happening in there. I was bribed, and my brothers, more my brothers, I mean, all through our kids, just come to church, we'll go to church, and if you're really good, we'll go to Godfather's Buffet afterwards, just come, to, you're coming to church, right? <laughs> And yet, it's important enough that here we are voluntarily. We realize, my friends, that this is important because praise is essential to a robust faith. Why, why is that? Why is worship and praise? Why is singing and gathering together and repeating the confession and the liturgy and praying communally and baptizing in community. Why is that important? Simply this, in our lives of faith, it is very easy for you and I to be consumed with our own needs. Whenever we focus primarily on our needs, then the supply of those needs ultimately becomes the goal, the supply, not the supplier. What I'm saying here is that because we're so focused and consumed by us, God becomes a means to an end. We reduce him to what we can get, and without realizing it, what we've, what we've done is we've written our prescription for spiritual disaster. We've given ourselves a terminal diagnosis of dead faith when God becomes the supplier and not the, just the means to supply and not the one worthy of praise. And we've all seen this. And in fact, I think it would be fair to say that some of us have experienced this in our lives. We didn't get what we needed. The person we love did not get well. The finances fell apart. The diagnosis came back worse than we could have possibly imagined. The job is not what we thought it would be. The marriage is coming undone. Fill in your blank. When God becomes simply the supplier, our faith quickly becomes sunk. Now this is super tricky. We can easily be deceived into believing that we're coming here voluntarily and therefore we have a robust faith. But what is our litmus test on that, my friends? It sounds like this. I didn't like the sermon today. I didn't like that song. I don't care for the liturgy. I don't understand why we have to sing that. I don't understand how they worship like that. I don't like contemporary. I don't like traditional. 
Well, it's really good because it's not about you. It's about him. But we so easily get into that self-included, right? There have been as many times in my life that I have said, I don't really like how that sounded or that, right? We all have to check ourselves because anytime it comes about us, God becomes a supplier, a means to an end. The shot in the arm, the immunization for a prescription of death is a burst of praise that is focused solely on who God is. And any revival, any revival of pure and faultless religion that God sees will be marked by focused, heartfelt praise. And that's why this passage from Isaiah for us today is so powerful because it turns the attention of Israel from what their needs were, salvation in this case, and instead it focuses them on God. In our translation that we use here at church, the second verse starts, surely God is my salvation. But in other translations of scripture, it says, behold. And anytime we read behold in the Bible, it's essentially God saying, pay attention. This is important. Behold, surely God is my salvation. What Isaiah is doing here is he's expressing the foundational truth of faith. Apart from God, there is nothing. It is not merely God who saves. It's not merely that he saves. It is he who is salvation. Do you follow that? He doesn't just give us what we need. He is all we need. God is not just a means to an end. He's not just an action. He is the whole and God is the goal. To know him is to know that God is all you need. Surely God is salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. I will trust and not fear. My friends, it is only fear that keeps us from trusting. Where does this fear come from? It comes from fear that God will fail us, which leads to fear that if God fails, then he's not able to keep his word, which leads us to struggle to trust him with all of our lives which leads us to cling tightly to control. But here's what I've discovered in my own life and in many others, many of you, is that those of us who can leap from fear to trust will discover that we have all we need. And it is that leap, closing your eyes and taking that step. And like Tom Petty said, cause I'm free free fallen what does he say he's free right that's how it ends i don't i mean i don't remember the rest of them but i'm free free fallen that free fall my friends into god into his trust is a free fall into the discovering of his character and what happens is that discovery of his character leads us to one place worship and praise, a song of praise, a heart of worship is the natural expression of a spirit that is free from fear and free from obligation and free from works. No spirit is so free from sin than the one that has discovered that salvation is God and has grasped that. And verse four says then, what is the outflow? Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might. He is my salvation with joy. You will draw water from the wells of salvation and you will say, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that he is exalted. But why? Why give thanks? I mean, yeah, so okay, he's our salvation. Why give thanks? And why call on him? And why proclaim his name? And what do we proclaim? My friends, we proclaim the name of Jesus. The saving work of God. Do you understand this? That God is salvation. How do we know that God is salvation? Because he is his son, Jesus, three in one. God is salvation. 
The saving work of God through his son Jesus reveals to us that while humanity is fickle, God remains faithful, and we see this in Jesus. While humanity abounds in falsehood and confusion, God reveals that he is the way and the truth and the life, and he does it through his son Jesus. And while humanity will continue to remind us that we fall short of the glory of God, that we have confessed that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves, that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone, while humanity will remind you of your sin, God reveals his grace through Jesus. My friends, we, we sing and we praise and we worship. We make known the deeds among the nations. We proclaim his name. We sing praises to the Lord because he has done gloriously for us. He has cast our sin as far as the east is from the west. He has declared over your life and mine that we are saved by grace through faith and it is not of our own doing. He has told us it is finished once for all. He has declared victory over death now and forever. He is making us new. Worship, coming to church on a Sunday morning should not satisfy a box in your week. Instead, it is meant to whet your appetite, to carry you through the whole week long. Our need for God is not taken care of by engaging in a moment of worship. It deepens and it overflows as we set aside and permeate the week. And I can tell you for my, myself, honestly, there are times in my life when God's word does not speak. It's dry. It's boring. It doesn't do anything for me. I can't find God, but you know what can? A song. In the same way the ABCs helps our kids remember how to do their letters, a song reminds us that he is good. We choose to worship and praise with the 52 million people that are doing it with us this morning because he is good. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God, my Father. There is no shadow or turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. All of my life, in every season, you are still gone. I have a reason to sing. I have a reason to worship. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul the joy of the lord is my strength the joy of the lord is my strength in the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Even when my strength is lost, I'll praise you. Even when I have no song, I'll praise you. Even when it's hard to find the words louder than I'll sing your praise. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Our Lord and our God is not our means to our end. He is all in everything. And my prayer for you and for me and for all of us is that we free fall into worship and praise so that even when we cannot see, we are reminded that he is good and he is faithful. We are going to continue on by singing. 
Our next hymn, 851. Uh, when our God in music is glorified. At this time, we join our voices together and declare our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This time the congregation may be seated, and we will receive our offering.
At this time, we lift our voices in prayer to the name above all names who is worthy of our praise. United with the saints of every time and place, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Our response today is hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Faithful God, when we question the future, you reveal the hope of victory through your Son, your great faithfulness, that is Jesus Christ. Give us the wisdom to rely on your words and the courage to worship in all times and places to your love and faithfulness. Hear us, O God. God, our ruler, you judge the world with righteousness and the people with equity. Grant perseverance to those who struggle, to those who serve you, to those who worship you, persecuted today. Grant your perseverance to leaders, officials of the world, so that they never grow weary in doing what is right. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious God, you offer peace to fearful hearts. Heal the hurts of all who suffer injustice and persecution, those who spend time in prisons or in hospitals, and for anyone in need today, especially Mary Giesler, Chris Moeller, the sister of Amy Svoboda. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, you are our song. Thank you for worship leaders, organists, artists, musicians, and all who create music for praise and prayer. Guide them in their talents and their leadership. Empower them to lift up new voices and works of art and assembly so that they may draw us to worship you. Hear us, O oh God. Everlasting God, as we await the dawn of the new heaven and the new earth, we give thanks for your beloved who have died in Christ, especially Nelda Minsel. Hear us, O oh God. Rejoicing in hope, we lift our prayers to you, most gracious Lord, trusting that you have received them in your care. Amen. And now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Against our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power forever and ever. Amen. And my friends, receive this benediction today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he look, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Our closing hymn today is number 856, How Great Thou Art.
Go in peace and serve our Lord. Amen.